Are you looking for Christmas crafts? Well, you have come to the right place because today's video is kicking off the Christmas DIY season with 30 Dollar Tree projects. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney and a huge welcome back to all my whiskey craft buddies who DIY with me week after week. If you're not already a craft buddy, no worries. Just click subscribe down below so you don't miss a future video and we can be craft buddies. A huge thank you to Warby Parker for sponsoring today's video and now let's get into the first project. I love a good candy themed DIY for Christmas and this is one of my favorites. I grabbed the silicone mold from Dollar Tree and filled it up with some hot glue. You want to let it sit and once everything is cooled down you can pop them out and you've got cute little candies. I got rid of any extra wispies with an X-Acto knife and then I gave the whole thing a coat of white for a primer. Then I did gray on either side for the cellophane wrapper and then I added the red with a little detailed brush and these things were ready to go. I added them to my gingerbread slash candy treat themed tiered tray in my dining room. I like it because they're a great size. They are hard so they sit up and they're not going to go bad on you and you can use them year after year. I love the look of candlelight with Christmas decor and mercury glass makes it that much better. So if you grab some of these Dollar Tree candles, you want some in a glass container. You can also do this to their vases as well. But if you're using a candle, you're going to want to put your containers in some boiling water. Make sure you use a hot pad and be super careful. Get all the wax out and then we're going to do a faux mercury glass. We're going to spray on a mixture of half vinegar, half water all the way around the outside and then spray over the top with this mirror effect spray paint. Take a paper towel and pop all of those water bubbles that are right underneath and that's going to give you the kind of bubbled mercury glass finish that we love. Do as many coats as you want to get your desired finish. I usually do about three to four. Then you can pop a real or faux candle. These are just LEDs from Dollar Tree inside of mine and they look awesome. To get the most out of my money at Dollar Tree, I love to look for wood items that I can make look even better. And this nativity scene was a huge hit last year. You're gonna want one of these 3D craft kits as well as a little tray from the craft section. I started by staining my tray dark walnut by Minwax stain, and this is going to be our little pedestal for our nativity. I took all the wood pieces and I painted them matte black with spray paint so that it looked more like a silhouette, but you could do whatever color that you want. If black matte is not your vibe for your Christmas decor, you could do white, you could do green, a variety of different colors. Then to assemble, I'm using some super glue gel that I also got from Dollar Tree. I love that stuff and use whatever you have around to help it sit up until it cures. I finished it off with a little bit of jute twine and this thing is awesome. It's great for small spaces if you still want to honor this meaning of Christmas. If you know me, you know I love a good printable and these are some of my favorites I've made. These are a ton of beautiful watercolor printables as well as some illustrations that will be available over on my blog. One of my favorite ways to do something a little different with your printables is grab a clipboard from the office supply section and just put your printable right under the clip. It gives it kind of a cool rustic vibe and it also helps things sit flush if you don't want the outside border of a traditional frame. You heard me before talk about wood and these bead strands are stunning. To make these, I created my own beads with these wood shapes. They've got a ton of different ones. They've got angels, they've got snowmen, but I decided to work with the trees. I took a clamp and made sure that I was in a safe zone with my hand and slowly drilled a hole down the center. I got rid of any of the extra pieces by sanding and then I stained and spray painted them both dark walnut and this hunter club green. When they were dry, I took a dowel needle and some jute twine to string them up with just some unfinished wood beads I had from my stash, as well as these fun buffalo check ones from Amazon. I will link those down below. They're really affordable and they add some pizzazz. And then the end of my strand just needed to be finished off with a tassel. So I just took some more jute twine, wrapped it around my hand about 40 or so times, slid it off and tied the top of my loop. Then I added some buffalo check ribbon just to kind of tie in to those beads tied the head of the tassel and then gave it a haircut. Then I made sure to add one to the other end as well and these were ready to go. I love them neutral, but you could do red and white trees, tons of different options and these are so stinking cute. This project was a huge hit last year over on my TikTok and it's this faux milk. So you're gonna wanna find a bottle. These iced coffees at Dollar Tree are perfect. Pour it out so you can drink it while you craft and remove the sticker. 
Then I mixed a little bit of water with some white acrylic paint and swirled it around on the inside. I originally tried to put painter's tape at the top to get this effect and it didn't work. So don't worry about the painter's tape. Just do what I'm doing here. Let it drain. And then when it has drained, but it's not dry, take a paper towel and just wipe the top. That's how you'll get the kind of milk top that you see there. Then just add a fun straw also from Dollar Tree and this is a great prop for your trays and tier trays and setups until you're ready to bring out the real thing for Santa. I love this small three foot tree that I have and I wanted to add some presents to the setup. So I did that by grabbing some bamboo cutting boards from the kitchen section and I started by staining them both with dark walnut stain. I just like the darker color underneath the paint but you could leave it as is and then paint it. I'm doing almost kind of a dry brush technique. I want the color to be vibrant, but I also want to see the wood through. So here's how I did that. You can also sand it down to make it look a little bit more rustic. And then we're going to take some ribbon, whatever you have, whatever matches your motif, and we're going to wrap it around. Now to get that present wrap, we are going to just loop it around to the back and then give it a quick little turn like this. You see, Oop, there you go. Then we're going to bring it back around to the front and loop both ends underneath that original piece that's going to have everything lay down nice and neat. You can also use that trick to wrap your presents as well. Once my bow was tied, I just trimmed the ends so everything was even. And then for the green one, I added some baker's twine as well as a little Dollar Tree snowflake ornament. You could add tags if you really want to, but these are fun to just set up a vignette and have some presents under your tree if you haven't gotten around to your shopping yet. In one of the mystery box challenges from last year, Jamie from the Crafty DIY Guy sent me these houses. So I took some nutmeg brown paint and painted the entire outside, and then I used some puffy paint to make some gingerbread houses for a village. I just pulled up some images on Pinterest or Google that I liked, and I tried to recreate them with the puffy paint that looks just like icing. If you like gingerbread, you'll also love this project, which are faux cookies, and you can make them all with Dollar Tree supplies. So we're going to start by mixing our dry ingredients. So two cups of flour, one cup of salt, and a quarter cup of cinnamon in a bowl. Stir that up, and this is a great activity for little kiddos to help with too. Once that's mixed up, we're going to slowly add three quarters of a cup of water bit by bit to get kind of a dough consistency that you're seeing here. Our last step is to add some vanilla. This is optional, but I love the scent with the cinnamon. And once that's all mixed in, then we're going to roll it out on the counter. Now, like typical cookies where you'd put flour down, I decided to do cinnamon just so I didn't get white in the dark dough. Now you can do a variety of different things. I cut some houses with a butter knife, but then I also broke out my Christmas cookie cutters to create gingerbread men and trees and snowflakes and all the things. So as you can see, it is a fun project to do with kiddos. Now, if you're gonna make ornaments, make sure to pop a hole in before we dry them out. I like to bake them for 45 minutes at 250 degrees to really start the drying process. I like to err on the side of less time. You could check them and then you can also put them back in. You just don't wanna dry them out too much cause it will really take down the brown pigment. Also, if it's almost there, but you're not sure how much more time, just let them sit out overnight and they will fully dry out. Then we're gonna take that same tulip puffy paint. I go through so much of this at the Christmas season. It is the best faux icing in my opinion and the little special tip that it has on it makes it really easy to do intricate designs like this. Once your puff paint is dry, you can display them, you can string them up like I did here for ornaments, or one of my favorite ways to use them is you can add them to a wreath for a fun baking theme display. There are so many projects you can make with these fun little styrofoam balls from Dollar Tree, especially because they look just like snowballs. For this one, I'm just trimming off a little bit of the bottom so it doesn't roll away on me. And then I'm taking a LED votive candle, marking the top, and then using an X-Acto knife and a spoon to get all of the styrofoam out of the center so that I could put the candle inside. When you do that and turn it on, it looks like a really fun glowing snowball. And I didn't have to add anything to it. That's just the styrofoam. There's no glitter or sparkles. It's awesome. Another idea for those balls are to make some of these fun high-end ornaments. These strike me as something you would see at Pottery Barn and you just need some styrofoam as well as some candlesticks. I started by taking some super glue gel and hooking two candlesticks together, skinny ends together, and took it outside and spray painted it with some mirror effect spray paint. I also decided to take one singular candlestick and spray paint it white. 
While I let those dry, I grabbed this pack from Dollar Tree that has two of them to kind of give you a size reference. I'm going to trim off the top with a serrated knife and use some hot glue to glue on one of these fun little hat ornaments also from Dollar Tree. Once you've got your snowman together, I took some super glue gel to hook my little snowman down just because of how wide the opening was, but for the small one I used hot glue to hook it to the white one. And the great thing about these is they can stay up all throughout the winter, they aren't just screaming Christmas, which is nice to get more mileage out of your DIYs. Now on my list of crafts that I have done, these are one of my absolute all-time favorites, these faux marshmallows. Now you can get some of this Crayola Model Magic at Dollar Tree in the white, but I wanted to make a ton, so I got this big container from Amazon, and I will link it down below so you can see the price and compare what you want to do. Now all you have to do is take it out, roll it in your hands, and then flatten the top and the bottom to get a marshmallow shape. You can do whatever size that you want, and then I let them dry overnight. Once they were dry, I went through with a paint marker to add eyes and a mouth with black dots and then a little carrot nose. Then you can display them in a wide variety of ways. One of my favorites is using one of these Dollar Tree jars, filling it up with a bunch of marshmallows and letting them kind of spill over the top. I just tied on some baker's twine and a little scoop that I glued two small ones to, but there are a ton of options and you can really make it your own. Christmas is the busiest season here at Whiskey and What. I'm always on my computer either editing or designing. And if you're anything like me, more screen time makes you realize that you might need some new glasses or you might even be late on your eye exam. And that is why I wanted to share about Warby Parker. Warby Parker offers everything you need for happier eyes. Eyeglasses, sunglasses, contact lenses, and eye exams. Plus you can shop with them online or in one of their stores. And get this, their glasses start at only $95, including prescription lenses. And Warby Parker makes the process super easy with their free at-home try-on program. I went on their website, I answered some questions, and then it gave me some personalized suggestions for my face shape and my style. I selected five from the ones they gave me, they shipped them, and I had five days to test them out on my schedule at home. And then I can easily ship them back with a prepaid label. Here are the five styles that I chose. The Halton, the Walti, Amelia, Felix, and these are the Landons. I like the dark color and these are my favorite. I really appreciate that they want you to love your purchase so you aren't obligated to buy after you do the try-on. And when you find ones you like, head back to the website to custom order them with your unique prescription like I did here. I also added on blue light blocking lenses. If this sounds good to you, try Warby Parker's free home try-on program. Order five pairs of glasses to try at home for free for five days. There's no obligation to buy. It ships free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. Try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash whiskey and wit. I love the way that just by adding a simple garland, you can add a ton of pizzazz to an area. And with this hat one, it is super easy. So you're going to want some yarn in the color of your choice, a toilet paper roll, and then some cardboard. We're going to start by trimming down our little toilet paper roll into little circles. And this is going to be the kind of chunky brim to the hat. Then on my cardboard piece, I'm wrapping around a ton of yarn. These are probably about six inch strips, so they'll be about 11 to 12 inches long when they're cut. And this just makes it easier to cut similar strips. Once those are cut, we're gonna pull our pieces off and we are going to loop them around the inside of our hat and pull through the ends. This is slightly tedious, I will not lie, but the end result is awesome. It's a great thing to do while you're sitting, binging a Netflix show. Now you want to make sure you do them all in the same direction. And here's a look from a different angle. You're going to loop it through and then loop your ends through that circle and slide it on and keep on going. Once your whole toilet paper roll is covered, you're going to take the pieces and push them in through the center. And this is going to make it look like those beanie hats that you fold over. Beanie is what we say in Illinois. I know our Canadian friends call them toques. There are a ton of different options of what to call them. I call them beanies. And then we're gonna tie the top off for the little pom-pom section. And then you're gonna give it a little haircut to create your pom-pom. Then it's as simple as stringing them up with some beads. I also used some pearl beads from Dollar Tree here to give it kind of the winter effect. And I did gray and white because this is another one where you can leave it up through the winter with the fun little hats. 
Another garland is this really fun felt one. And this came about because I had a really hard challenge item again from Jamie from last year's mystery box. He sent me these little counter things from the teacher section and I had to use them. So I used my miter shears and chopped them up. So I had two little alien little antenna looking things. But after I spray painted them red, they looked like berries. Then I took a bunch of sheets of felt. You can use Dollar Tree felt, but I really liked this color from Walmart. I cut out these little leaf pieces and then used some hot glue to adhere them so that they were kind of 3D. Now, if you have a Cricut, you can use that to cut these out. I just wanted to show how to do it by hand in case you don't have one. And then I cut some strips of felt to be my kind of center point. Then using a detailed hot glue gun, just adding it to either side, all the way down, alternating. And I'm gonna make a few of these strips that I can then hook together into a garland. It was easier to work bit by bit because I didn't have a long string of felt. I also decided to add a little bit more felt on the top just to cover up those centers and make it look a little bit more finished. Then I just used some more hot glue to add those little berries underneath my center strip. And this was Christmasified in no time. This thing is super cute. It's nice and lightweight because it's felt. I love the colors. I love that it has kind of a nostalgic feel and it looked great under our TV. It never fails. Every year I always forget a gift or something to give someone and these are a great option for that. Grab a Dollar Tree jar. You can use whatever you want, but I like this type. And then you're gonna grab some more of those wood shapes we used earlier. I decided to use the trees again with some super glue gel on the bottom to hook them to the lids. And then you can go through and spray paint them whatever color you want. This is Hunt Club Green. It was funny, I was talking to Megan over at Glue Guns and Roses about this project. We actually did something similar each on our own. So I guess great minds think alike, but be sure to go check out her channel because I know she did something similar like this for Christmas as well as for fall. And they're really a great way to add some pizzazz to the tops of jars. I also did a similar thing by spray painting the jar white. And then I took one of these ornaments and just painted it slash use antique wax to stain it. Gave myself a green tree, tied it on with some baker's twine, and it was ready to go. I add baker's twine to literally everything around Christmas time. I love it. You could also do just a plain red lid, and then I spray painted this after I used some wood filler on the snowflake, used some super glue to top it off there, and this gives you another great look. I used this jar actually to hold those marshmallows that I shared before. Hey friend, if you're still with me, be sure to head down to the comments and leave me a Christmas emoji. That just lets me know you are sticking with me and you're enjoying these projects. Now let's get back into the DIYs. Last year was the first year that I did a full gingerbread themed tree in our dining room. And I really wanted to add some large like peppermint candies like this. And so I decided to make them myself. From Dollar Tree, I grabbed some of these two packs of craft foam in a circle, and then I ended up using these pipe cleaners or chenille stems, or some people call them fuzzy something. There's a bunch of names for them, but if you don't have these, you can grab white and red from Dollar Tree and twist them yourself. I started by making a long strand by twisting some ends together, and then we're going to just start spiraling it. I found it was a lot easier to get the spiral going like this, glue it down, and then start adding more around the outside instead of gluing and twisting as I went. It also helped me really find the center, which was also huge because you didn't want your spiral to be to the left or to the right. After I finished wrapping, then I grabbed some cellophane. You can get this in the party aisle from Dollar Tree. It's not a seasonal special thing. I scrunched the sides, rolled them up, and tied them with some, you guessed it, Baker's twine, because I said I use it on everything. Tied it up, trimmed the ends of the cellophane, and then it's so easy to add to your tree. I just kind of pushed it in there, and then you can bend up your branches if you need to to create a little shelf. I love this tree, and I cannot wait to get it up again this year. Speaking of baking and sweets, we're going to grab one of these mixing bowls, but we're going to use it for something different than you think. Now this was a feature in my top Cricut blanks last year. I've got a full video of 20 projects plus one from the year before. So if you've got a Cricut and want to do some inexpensive, easy Dollar Tree projects, those videos are for you. I downloaded this son of a nutcracker cut file from the movie Elf and decided to apply it to the side of the container. Once I got it applied, then it was time to add some fun pizzazz to it. And that is with these Dollar Tree snowballs. 
I put them in there, filled it up, and then Finn and I can have an indoor snowball fight. We're not going to hurt anybody because they're squishy. If you've got a mantle to decorate or you're looking for some large scale items from Dollar Tree Supplies, this one's for you. Grab yourself some of these thicker wood craft sticks and start by gluing the ends together of two of them like I'm doing here. Then we're also going to glue some together into kind of a carrot shape. So I've got six of those straight end to ends and then I'm gonna have a, another set of six of these little carrots as I'm gonna call them. I also cut some smaller pieces for the outside edges of my snowflake and then it was time to assemble. So I started by laying out all of my straight pieces and then putting the carrot pieces in between and as you can see here it's coming into a snowflake shape. I used some hot glue around the outside with my little Sure Blonder one to make sure that everything kind of glued down. I used some of those cut pieces in the center as well as out around the outside in a V shape to really make it look like a snowflake. My last step was to add a little bit more to the back just to make sure it was reinforced. And then I took it outside and spray painted the entire thing with just some white spray paint. These things were quick and easy to put together. They are super great for mantles or on walls like I'm showing here. And they add a lot of scale for not a ton of effort or a ton of money. Another easy peasy project, especially if you're short on space, are these fun magnets. They are all free printables that will be available over on my blog and you can just size them to whatever size you want, print them out and cut them out. Then I took some scrap foam board and traced and cut out the squares and used a good old handy dandy glue stick to stick the items down. And you could also stick them down with double sided tape as well. Now to kind of give them a faux lamination, I took some Dollar Tree packing tape and applied it across the top and the bottom, trying to get the seam to line up perfectly and then wrap the tape around the back. This will protect it, especially if it's in your kitchen on your fridge. Then to make them magnets, I just used these magnetic buttons, stuck them on the back, and they're strong enough to hold them up on your fridge. I love the artwork, and these are also great to take to your cubicle at work or for your teacher to put on your board. Nice, fun, festive, and quick and easy to put together. This snowman door hanger is so cute, and it's really easy to paint. I was worried, but trust me, you can do it. You're gonna grab a Dollar Tree pizza pan and start by spray painting the entire thing white. I gave it two light coats to make sure it was fully covered. Then bring it back inside and it's time to paint. So I started with some red paint and I made two little cheek circles but it looked too much like strong blush to me. So I took my finger and buffed it out to give it more of like a pink, I've been out in the cold for a while look. Once those were buffed out, then I took a paint marker and did two eyes as well as the mouth. Gave them some little kind of marks above the eye to make it look a little more cartoonish and added some gray to the outside and buffed that out just like I did the cheeks. Then we're gonna add our carrot nose with some orange paint and I also buffed in some darker brown paint just to give it a little bit of a three-dimensional look. And then what's a snowman without a scarf? So I just added this with a little bit of a tie as well as some hot glue. Now, if you plan on using this on your front door and it gets a lot of sunlight, do not do this on the back. You're going to want to hook it with something else other than hot glue because I have had it melt and fall apart on me. But if you're just using it inside, you can use the hot glue. Then the last step is to trim the scarf. I just folded the ends and dovetailed it and hung it on top of my little boxwood wreath He's so cute, and this is another great option for all winter long. Another option, if you don't want that big of a circle, is to grab one of these bottle cap signs from the Crafter Square section. And this one I'm making into a little gingerbread man. So I painted it with two coats of nutmeg brown just in the center. I left the little scalloping, the metal color. And then I went in with a paint marker just in white and created a squiggle outside. And then we're going to add the little face. So two black eyes, a little outline for the nose and a mouth, as well as some eyelashes, eyebrows, and then we're going to do some cute little cheeks. I made the nose red. 
Kind of finished it off with a couple more details and this is a great oversized ornament or you could also put this on a gift. It would be a great present topper as well. If you're in need of a hostess gift, this one is perfect and it won't take you a ton of time. I grabbed these flat edge spatulas and I cut out some different sayings as well as the Grinch face to apply right to the edge. Now these are no longer usable, they're just for decor, but these are cute with a little hot pad and quick and easy to throw together. This one's also quick and easy. These arrows are my absolute favorite. I have done these for so many seasons and I just keep making more because I love them so much. You are going to need one of these arrow signs and you can usually find them in the photo aisle. This one I painted green, the other one I painted red. You just want to cover the entire thing. And then I cut out this free file. The Christmas tree one as well as the hot cocoa are both free over on my blog. I apply them with my paper transfer tape to make sure I don't peel up any of the paint. And these are ready to go. You can add baker's twine, some jute twine, or just leave as is, and they are great. I also took this one and just put it into my tree as like a large ornament, so there's a ton of different uses. Another one of the challenge items that came through last year was this kind of tinsel present. You guys know how I feel about glitter and all things like this, so I had to chop it off. It gave me a nice little box to work with on the inside and I ended up wrapping it with some burlap fabric I had just already in my stash. Now I wrapped it just like a present, but anywhere that you would normally put tape, I put hot glue. Then to act as the ribbon, I did some buffalo check fabric and I just tied it around, but you could use jute twine or whatever you have. Then I popped apart this frame, which Jamie also sent me in that mystery box. And I painted the outside white and then just printed out this really cute printable from the How the Grinch Stole Christmas. I glued it to the back of the frame and reframed it. And then I used a craft stick to hook the two together. So I've got a little present next to this passage from How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And this was a fun little gift I gave to my best friend last year because she loves the Grinch. Last year I fell in love with these MDF snowflakes that Dollar Tree carries and I thought these would make a really great porch sign. So I had some leftover pallet wood just hanging out at my house. So I took three pieces, I sanded them down, I cut them as needed, and then I used the scrap pieces to brace it. I just used my nail gun to nail everything down. And if you don't want to do this, you could easily pick up just a piece of wood at your local hardware store or places like Hobby Lobby, Michaels, or even Target now has big wood pieces. So I'm just, you know, bracing it so it stays as one sign. Then I laid all of them out and I used wood filler to make sure I filled any of the hanging holes because we aren't going to use them for hanging. And then I spray painted them all white. It was just a quicker process. I gave them two layers. Then I'm going back through with my nail gun, figuring out where I want all my snowflakes and just hooking them to the board. If you don't have a nail gun, you could also use something like wood glue or that gel super glue from Dollar Tree. Once everything was ready to go, the sign was perfect. I use this inside my house, but you could use it for your porch. Just make sure to put some sort of sealant on it so it stays intact and you don't have the elements attack it this winter. Now, I absolutely love National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. It's my favorite Christmas movie of all time, but I also love Elf, and that's what inspired this Etch-A-Sketch ornament. You grab one of these little Etch-A-Sketches from the kids toy section at Dollar Tree. And then I got this file from a girl in a glue gun and I will link where the pack came from down below. It is as easy as applying it to the little item, putting some glue down and gluing a hanger on the back. This is super fun. This could also be a fun little thing to tie on to a bottle of wine as a hostess gift. If you know you have a friend that loves Elf, Another use for those large snowflakes is to make a fun wreath. So I ended up grabbing those MDF ones as well as these kind of glittery ones. They're a little bit bigger than the wood ones and Dollar Tree has these every year. I started by giving them all a good coating of white spray paint so they were all a similar color. And then I went back inside and used these cute little skates that Dollar Tree had last year and has again this year. I removed the hanging element and then I also painted the skates 
gray because they were brown and I've never seen a brown skate. Brown snowshoe, but not a brown skate. So there's that. Now they also had this Buffalo Check Deco Mesh. So I decided to use that for my wreath so I could use it well past Christmas. And I'm going through and just cutting six inch pieces of the mesh. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want a little coil like that. Then when they're rolled up, you're going to take a bunch of them. So here I'm doing three of them and I'm taking some black pipe cleaners just because that coordinates with the color of the black and white buffalo check and I'm going to twist it around. Now you want to make sure that you give yourself the tails then because you're going to use that to hook it on your wreath form. You can use whatever wreath form that you have, the Dollar Tree cells or anywhere else. I liked the square one just for a new look. So then I started taking my bunches and just twisting them onto my wreath. So it's as simple as twisting a bunch of three because they're already curly cues and just hooking them around the outside. Once I made it all the way around, it was time to embellish. So I'm using some of this white cotton twine because again, it goes with the colors of my snowflakes and I'm just hooking it through the center of the openings of the snowflakes and then tying it right directly to the wreath form. I like the look of adding one of the snowflakes on top of my MDF one, and then I'm just gonna tie them all around the outside until I get where I wanted. My last step was to add my cute little ice skate on there, and this thing was good to go. You could also do something similar like this and add some ribbon to make it look like a present if you want it to be more Christmas and not just winter. But I love the snow theme, especially because I'm from Illinois. It snows like crazy here. I'm outside of Chicago. So this fits our winter perfectly. After I made that wreath, I had a ton of the little centers of the deco mesh everywhere. And so I decided to make some fun little candies. So I took some Dollar Tree wrapping paper that looked like a candy. I measured it out and cut the pieces down. Then using some double-sided tape, I just glued the pieces down. And then on the outside, I just took some wrapping paper, clear tape, took it down. Then I'm cutting some cellophane, same stuff I used before about the size of my candies. I'm going to wrap it up, use some tape to adhere it. And then we're gonna tie the ends with some baker's twine. Quick and easy, simple, and I really liked being able to repurpose all of those inside pieces. You could do something similar with toilet paper rolls, or if you want bigger ones, you could do paper towel rolls, but it's a great way to reuse things instead of having it end up in the trash. I love taking Dollar Tree trays like this and gluing them together to make larger sign blanks. So I took two of them and some Gorilla Wood glue, stuck them together and used a clamp to let it dry for about 20 minutes. Once it dried, I gave it a quick stain with some dark walnut stain so it looks nice and deep wood tone. And then I got this file from Design Bundles. I really loved the way that it looked and it was gonna fit onto the box sign really well. So I gave it a quick weed and applied it with my paper transfer tape, peeled it right off, and this thing was good to go. It sits up on its own because it's got a flat edge at the bottom and it's a larger piece of wood than you would normally find at Dollar Tree. So all around, it's a win-win-win. Glitter ornaments usually get really popular around Christmas time and here is how you can make them with the Dollar Tree plastic ones. You're going to need some polycrylic or you can also use this mop and glow. It will both work similar to have your glitter stick to the outside of your ornament. You're going to add enough so that you can slosh it around and coat the entire outside of your ornament. Give it a spin. Be careful as you go so you don't spill it everywhere and then you can put the excess right back into your container. Then I put it on a solo cup to let the excess kind of go out so it's not all goopy. And then I put this fine glitter in there that I got from Walmart, shook it around, and with the green, I thought this would make an awesome Grinch ornament. So I cut out the Grinch face on my Cricut and I added it to the front of my ornament. And this thing turned out so cute. It's very fun for Grinch fans and the glitter is just beautiful. I like it because it's not too much, but you know, it is the Grinch. 
That's gonna do it for today's video, chock full of a ton of Christmas DIY inspiration. Be sure to head down to the comments and let me know your favorite project. And also while you're down there, check the description for more information on Warby Parker. Order five pairs of glasses to try it home for free for five days. There's no obligation to buy. They ship free and it includes a free prepaid return shipping label. Try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash whiskey and wit. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any future Christmas videos. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Cheese. Are you saying cheese? Where are we? Are we? Can you say we're a dollar tree? A dollar tree. Say mommy brings me here all the time. <laughs> Bring at the time.